There, I bet you'd like to hear something, right? Forgot to turn that off. Oh my goodness, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you, yeah, it's crazy. It's been very um, hectic the last few minutes here because things just don't always work. But it looks like according to my computer over there that it's working okay. I believe my camera, or my camera and my microphone are both on. Whew. Um, not getting any comments, so if you are commenting and um, I am not responding, I apologize. I'm hoping that will change soon. So um, tonight we are going to look at uh, what to do if you're in a slump. Uh, maybe you're making some cars or you just got a new stamp set, you just have a new pack of paper and you kind of look at it and go, I don't know what to do with this. And if you're um, sitting there and just a bit... I don't know, maybe you just need some inspiration. I have an idea for you, and those are card sketches. Uh, I think I might have talked about them a little over a year ago on one of my um, pe past Facebook Lives, but um, it was something that I needed recently, and I thought maybe everybody else would enjoy that um, as well, if you haven't heard of them, or just a reminder. They are something that you can find, at, they're basically layouts for your cards, and sometimes you you just need new ideas. And so um, there are ne many places that you can get ske sketches, which are layouts um, that are set up for you, and you just fill in and use your products um, and maybe kind of tweak things to make it work for you, depending on what you have. Um, and so I'll kind of give you some examples here in a few minutes and um, give you um, just hopefully some things that can aid in your own inspiration and um, if you're having a creative block a little bit that can kind of help too. Um, so I find mine on Pinterest usually and so if you go to Pinterest um, just search for card sketches then you'll have a ton of ideas and they are something you can either make your own board on Pinterest and call it card sketches and then you can refer back to it if you're ever needing those. If you're more of a hands-on paper person um, and not as much on the computer, then you are able to just print them out and maybe have a little file of them or a binder of them. Um, and if you, let's see, what are some other ways you can do it? Just maybe have a folder on your computer. Um, by the way, let's go back a little bit. I was a little frazzled, so I probably didn't even introduce myself. I am Teresa, and I am from Keep in Touch Crafts up in Oak Grove, Minnesota. Um, welcome, and hope you're having a great week. If you are um, looking for any inspiration tonight, hopefully this is the place for you. Um, you can catch me on the replay, too. Most people do. Um, also, I'll try to get this up on YouTube, and um, you can access those there. So however you're joining me, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And um, contact me if you need a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for anything. Let's get our camera down a little bit, um, and I will show you all the goodies we have for tonight. So thanks again for joining me. Let's go down to the desktop. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple things. Um, one thing I wanted to remind you all of, and that is that we have, um, is this upside down? Curiously. Gosh, yes. Sorry, hang on. Close your eyes. That hasn't happened to me for a long time. That is so weird. Um, okay, so we are going to get this uh, squared away again. It's just one of those days, right? Okay. I think we're good. We're getting there. This is still off center. Not quite right. I will get there. I think I put my camera in different tonight or something. I don't know. Who knows? I'm not really the best technology person. I'm working on it, aren't we all though, right? Like everything changes all the time and um, it's always a challenge. So I'll try to keep everything where it belongs to, where it needs to be here for you. Um, so I wanted to remind you of Paper Pumpkin. If you want to be in on the next one for June, you have to order by June 10th. And it's Expressions in Color, which is going to be um, a kit that is going to make nine cards with envelopes 
You're going to get two different um, ink spots with it this time and a stamp set, of course. And it, this kind of gives us a little sneak peek of what the colors might be and um, just kind of the look of it, which it looks like an alcohol ink, <clears throat> excuse me, alcohol ink type of a um, look to it. So I am super stoked about it. Hopefully you are as well. Uh, you can have this ordered and come right to your uh, mailbox at home. It's all inclusive and um, you'll be able to craft with that. You can make exactly what it says or if you feel like branching out, you can always put your own twist on it as well. And what's nice is they're portable. So if you're going to be on vacation, take it with you. Um, and then you're going to have something to do if you have some downtime, but yet you don't have to pack up a huge bag or anything. So it's comes in a nice little square box. Um, I wonder if I have one around I can show you. Here's an example of one that was a Christmas one we had at one time. So they're about, oh, about tw a little less than 12 by, um, 12 by, what do we got? Six? 6 by 12 prob approximately. It's a nice sturdy box so that you can just keep all your supplies there and then you won't um, lose anything, which would be nice, right? And it comes with everything you need. Maybe just have a, um, whoops, maybe some baby wipes or a sponge or some way to clean off your stamps and maybe a scissors and that's about it. It'll come with adhesive, everything you need. All right, um, let's get started on what I'm talking about tonight. So I am going to grab some samples. I printed out some of these uh, various sketches to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. People who are uh, scrapbookers do this as well. And so what you can do is find various ideas for layouts of your cards that keep it very generic so that you can go ahead and um, switch it up and put in what your products it's just kind of general ideas these are a few that like I said I just found and printed out today um, there were very many to choose from so you can see uh, let's just find an example so this one is um, just kind of shows you some elements that you can put on your card now it doesn't give you any of the sizes it doesn't give you um, you know, patterns or anything. It's just very generic so that it can be used with your products. All right, so let's go ahead and see some examples. I have two different cards I'm going to make tonight using card sketches. And the first one I will grab here. I'll grab all my goodies. And it is going to use this card sketch. Um, so it's very basic looking. You could choose something, just colors in there. You can use this as stamping and um, paper. Like if you want to use your what we call DSP, which is our designer series paper, you could substitute that in for any of these pieces. But um, I'll show you what I came up with. So I am using a paper pack. I wanted to try out some paper that I got recently and here looks like a big old mess. I'm gonna get you out some of my uncut sheets. I just keep everything together. And this is called, um, let me find it. There's the, it's in our ca uh, catalog. I'm gonna grab that and show you. And it is with the Sweet Symmetry set. I'm gonna go out a little bit here you can see it a little better sweet symmetry it's the paper that goes in this paper pack so if you're feeling stumped one place to always start with is in our catalog and there's always ideas here for you to try um, but like I'm just using the paper I'm not using the stamp set that goes with it so the paper it is telling me is on page 133 and um, I, like I said, I didn't get any of the other products that go with it. So I just bought the paper set, which is here. And one nice thing about um, here is that it does show us that it coordinates with Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, Flirty Flamingo, Just Jade and Night of Navy. Those are our colors. 
So you can use any of those colors and they will match that paper. So uh, there's one, two, three, there's six sheets, uh, six double-sided sheets. So one side is more of a pattern and one is more muted. So that gives you 12 different designs of 12 by 12 paper in one sheet. And each one, there's um, at least two of each. So I had that to start with and I thought, well, what can I do with that? So I decided, I'm just showing you the paper right now. Um, let's get this out. So I, let's show you the um, pattern sides. So it kind of takes up the whole screen, but that's okay. It kind of gives you that idea. Um, here is one side of it and or one pattern and we have another pattern like so. I don't know if this is showing you very well. And we have this pattern is one of them. And we have one like this. Okay. I don't know if the colors are coming across very well. Um, there is, a, for one thing, it has navy in it, which I love. I love the navy colors, which this one features a lot of navy. I don't know if I showed you these. Those are a couple other sheets. And then on the other side is, like I said, that more muted tone to the paper. More of an all over, not so many colors on each sheet, which is nice too. And they have their own pattern on there. So that's a couple of them. And then here's more of the all over jade color. And of course my favorite, because I love blue. Right on Cindy, yes, we love blue. And more of that yellow. So you can get an idea. I probably missed some. Let's see. I think this is a different yellow pattern. And it has kind of that same print, that same shape on it. And then there's the um, more of the pink tone as well. So anyways, that's the, pattern, the paper I had that I thought I want to figure out um, a card to make that I didn't really know what to do since I didn't have a whole suite of products and that kind of thing. And that happens to all of us sometimes that you only have parts of it, right? So um, you can always put it with other things, other stamp sets or other papers or other products that you have. But... Um, I kind of wanted to focus on the paper for this one. So for an example of using this sketch, what I came up with, now again, the idea to this is use what you have, right? So what I have is not gonna be the same as what you have. And so feel free to go ahead and um, just, you know, take what you have, substitute it. It doesn't have to be the same. This is very basic just for the idea of it all. So what I came up with then is I've been playing around with using, I'm just going to use the yellow on this one. And then I usually also use the, the same color if I'm going to um, use the same color as the background. I use that and then I put it on here just to add a little more um, depth to it. It really um, does add a lot. So what I did is took an 8.5 by 11 sheet of our bumblebee. I cut it in half so that it's four and a quarter by 11, okay? And I scored it at four and a quarter in the middle. It's very standard size of card. And I'm gonna set that aside because we'll be putting everything together at the end. And then I have, this is just a basic card layer that is a little bit smaller. So if you see this, it, it's just a little bit smaller than what I have there. It is four inches by five and a quarter inches. So it's a quarter of an inch less than the card base. And I'm gonna be putting our background on that. So I guess I should keep this kind of nearby so you can sort of get an idea. So um, I have cut out some of this ahead of time because I didn't want to take so long just in the design part of it. So what I've done then is I decided to use a similar color for the strips that it's showing. You see the strips on there? There's one here and one here, and I just chose to go with half inch wide. So I had a half inch by four inches for one of them, and they are gonna go, it's gonna go approximately there. And then, um, let's go just a 
titch closer maybe I don't know I gotta keep moving you around don't I and then I'm gonna have this one is four by it's four inches wide by a half inch five and a quarter by a half inch and notice um, since the paper does have a pattern to it I have to I wanted the pattern to be going up and down so my first cut on this one had the pattern going the same as this I didn't want that I wanted it I mean it was like opposite so it wasn't going the right direction so that's one thing to keep in mind when you're cutting out your your DSP or paper patterned paper is to keep those um, patterns going in the right direction and I played around with cutting out some circles and what I used you can use a punch whatever punch you might have you can use dies you can whatever you happen to have so I am using um, a die from what was this one picture this and I used this last I think yeah all of last week I did a whole bunch of stuff with this so this time I'm using the circles but I only used this to actually cut out these circles from my patterned paper and um, so that is nice that I could use two of these just run it through my die cut machine and get the stitched um, circles in the patterns I wanted and they're all the same size so that was a nice use of this same die that I have again you would just use with use what you have um, if you have a punch or whatever um, so here we have some of those elements and you know you could do so much with this if you would choose to you could die cut this background piece not die cut it sorry you could emboss it dry emboss it to have a little texture um, I kind of wanted this one to be just a little bit more simple so I will be adhering this I might as well start doing that I'm gonna get my adhesive and um, I'm gonna put some uh, stamp and seal on the back of the first vertical strip that I have okay and that's gonna go here but now I do kind of want to plan ahead and make sure I'm not putting the strip too far because I want the these circles to be on here um, kind of centered over it I want to make sure then that I'm putting this where it goes so I'm only touching down this one um, end where the adhesive is and so I'm kind of I I'm using this as a guide to help me make it straight and so let's put it down here I'll scoot it down a little bit and I'm using the, my grid paper behind to make sure that's nice and straight okay and then I'm gonna do the um, this horizontal piece but that can be lower because um, if you, I'm gonna sh try to show you this sketch again it does show that well maybe these are the same I guess you can do it however you want whatever look you you want so maybe I should keep it more the same I guess that's what I'll do and change your mind every two seconds like I do if you want <laughs> this I love the seal because it's very sticky and um, I don't have to worry about it coming apart and that kind of thing so I um, like to get it again on the grid paper you don't have to use grid paper it's just kind of what I happen to do just because I have it and if you don't you can eyeball it or use whatever method you can use a ruler you can draw lines on there that kind of thing whatever works for you all right so there is our paper it does I do need to trim it just a teeny titch here on the back if I flip it over I can see that I have a little hanging over up here I want to snip off and then yeah I think that's fine okay then um, I'm gonna be putting my circles on now this card is you know pretty simple it doesn't have a lot to it which is fine sometimes that's what we want um, so I chose to do um, these three patterns oh, I gotta get this in the right spot how's that those are the three I'm using so I want I don't know you can do it in any order but um, I just wanted to make sure that that yellow was on all three so that they would um, match um, which is nice thing about our, our paper is that it does all coordinate of course you could use you know a background one that's more muted but I kind of liked getting the patterns in there and kind of showcasing them 
And so I am going to grab my um, dimensionals. One thing I forgot to grab ahead of time. And let me find some. Jeez. Hello, dimensionals. Where are you? Okay, I found them. I'm coming. So if you have dimensionals, those work great. Um, and the dimensionals are double-sided adhesive, so they can be your adhesive along with um, popping up your project a little bit and giving it a little more interest and depth. I'm just going to put one on the back of each one. So there's one, and two, three. It's kind of in the center, it doesn't really matter. Like so. Kind of giving them a little press so they'll stay on there well. And I think I'm going to go, the first one is the one that kind of matters with, oops, why is this not coming off? There we go. The first one that you put down has to be at this cross section. That'll be the easiest one to get in place there to make sure that's proper placement. And then I can just kind of play around with it a little bit um, and see if I would put the same distance top and bottom. Then would there be enough room well, actually, I want the white in the middle. No, not really. So I am going to make these a little bit closer than that, just leaving only about an eighth of an inch in between. So I'll do the top one next. And we'll get the, um, I'm going to grab my take your pick tool because it's quicker. As you know me, I'm like the slowest crafter ever. So I try to, when I'm doing my videos, I try to hurry up a little bit because you know, sometimes I've been known for an hour and a half later, here we are, still going at it. My bad. Okay, and then we'll do the third one. Pick that off, and we will put that one right in the middle. I'm trying to keep them somewhat straight if possible, like so. Now, of course, on the front you want to have a sentiment, and I've decided to use... Oh, this one. I'm going to use, um, again, use what you have. I am going to use some sentiments from Inspired Thoughts, which is a new one. And this one I've decided to do um, kind of a, what did I decide? A thank you card. I think both of them I decided were thank yous tonight. But you could do whatever you feel like because whatever you have, again. Um, this one is nice because it has everything from... Um, peace, love, joy, and Christmas in it to sympathy, thank you, congratulations, etc. So I've decided to use the uh, thank you theme to it. And so what I'm going to do is on the front, I am going to be putting you make a difference every day. And then on the inside, I'm going to put thank you so much. And so then you'd be able to put your message or whatever on the inside. Um, and I'm going to use the blue, the navy blue ink to really make that kind of pop a little bit. So first I'm going to stamp on the outside here. And I've decided to put that about right here. Okay. All right. So I am getting this ink up a little bit. Ooh, this is a very newly inked pad. i got to see if I'm gonna, this is why I like to stamp on paper like this you can try it see how this had oh I'm making a mess already I gotta quit this I gotta get <laughs> I can't do that oh I'm the world's messiest and I have to like stop it because then I get ink all over my project where I don't want it so we're gonna try this again I'm gonna be a nice neat printer or um, crafter and that won't hurt anything I don't think we are going to lightly dab, dab, dab on my ink pad. And I am going to stamp it about here. And I'm not going to rock it too much. You make a difference every day. Okay? Very subtle. Not perfectly straight. So I'm not perfectly 100% happy with it. I could um, punch it out and put it on top, which is what I usually do if I don't stamp it the way I like. Um, so what should we do? Let's go ahead and do that. I am going to get um, 
Maybe, do I want yellow this time? I could go white, but yeah, I think maybe I'll just get a little piece of that bumblebee. I'm switching it up on myself. I already made a mistake, so I already have to fix it. So one thing I'm gonna do is I can give you a little tip too. Since I'm gonna be putting this on here, all of this is covered up, right? So if we, none of that's gonna show, I guess it will show on the back, but if we would have something on the inside, it wouldn't show. Gosh, I'm, see, I'm getting ahead of myself. Because sometimes if you're covering it up and you use this, you can punch it out, but then it would be a layer, then it would show on this side. So I probably better not do that this time. But if you're doing that with designer series paper, that kind of thing, it is something that you're able to do if you if it won't show, of course. All right, so what I'm going to do is grab some paper that's yellow. Um, hang on, guys. Sorry. I should just have scraps, like, ready to go. I should know better. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm just going to stamp like that. That is perfect stamping. That's great. Um, and then on the inside, I'm going to be stamping another sentiment, so I might as well just do that right away and not stamp it on the actual inside because I'll probably mess it up again, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do the thank you so much right away as well, putting that on the block and giving that a stamp. Okay, then I'll be able to actually cut it out straight, <laughs> right? Okay, so now I'm going to get my little trimmer. I just have a little desktop one that's really nice for this type of application, I guess you'd say. Um, I'm wondering, my, I think I bumped my camera. Sorry guys, hang on. This is really <laughs> wonky. Must have bumped it. Not having the best luck with my camera tonight. So, I'm just going to make a little banner for this one. Um, like so. Okay. Thank you so much. That's going on the inside. And then I'm going to also do... Um, a, won't have much, as much of an edge on this one or is not as much of a border, I should say. But I do want to keep it the right size or whatever so that it's going to fit in my little puncher that I'm going to have. Now, if you don't have um, a little, the little punch that I'm going to show you, again, this is an example of just use what you have. If you would like to do this on your own, if you want to make little banner ends on it, um, what you can do is, I'm going to use this as an example. If this was your piece, then what you could do is snip up right in the middle, and then you would go from one corner to the center, and then another, the other corner to the center, and then you have a banner end like that, which is really popular on cards to have that little banner end. Um, sometimes I like to cheat a little bit and use a punch. And so we have a little banner punch thing that um, has slots in it. So it could be, I think it's half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch widths that will work in here. And so you can either have a pointed end on it or the um, inverted as well. So I think for this one... I am gonna, I haven't even used this one before, so let's try this one. You can always see on the back where you're going, which is nice. And you wanna make sure it's kind of in the middle, which it is there. And then, I wonder if, I don't know, maybe I made that too long. It doesn't show a lot anyways, but I am gonna show you a way to make it. So it will show a little bit more than that. I usually make them a little bit smaller and more to the size of your words, but I kind of wanted this one a little longer. And I probably, okay. So 
So that's how that came out. <laughs> Look at my inky fingers. Can you tell I've been working in my craft room all day? They, wow, they weren't that bad a little bit ago. <laughs> you make a difference every day. Alrighty. Then for the inside, I'm going to use the thank you so much here that I already did. I'm going to turn that one just a little bit more. And then go ahead and I'm going to do the ends on that one. But this time I'm going to do this one where it's the inverted, the typical banner look, I guess you'd say. Hope I'm in the camera. Yay. Whoa. Okay. There's one. And two. Okay. Thank you so much. There are our sentiment banners. <clears throat> um, couple things you could do. You could ink the edges of it if that's a look you like. But I think I'm just going to go with subtle on this one still. But I could pop this up to make it kind of show a little more. Or, yeah, I think I'm just going <laughs> to, I change my mind every minute. I'm going to just do one end of this, like so. And it could be matted on paper and that kind of thing. But again, I, I'm trying to make myself be better about keeping it more simple because I just keep going and keep going. And sometimes that's not always good either. Because then it gets kind of busy so there we go so this make a difference every day that's our layout from our um, layout page which is right here okay very similar right the only other thing is up at here it's showing to put some uh, little um, rhinestones or something on there so I'm gonna find mine that I just saw a second ago they are little they're just little things see those um, these are the same color and I'm gonna just put them there again keeping it subtle and they come from the 2021 in color jewels so if you're wondering they do come in bigger sizes which probably I could use but I had just decided to use these little ones. Use what you have or what you have out. <laughs> um, so we have one here still. And two. And three. Come on, guy. Okay. So this is the front of it, and we're going to adhere that now onto our actual card front. Um, it would also look nice if I had a contrasting color. I'm just going to kind of show you some uh, examples. Like if you had a navy background on it, that would, my, ooh, that would look really nice, wouldn't it? Ooh, but I'm using navy on my next one. I could use any of these colors. It could be white. Um, we could have a white background, which would kind of look like this, okay? Um, that can kind of make that white layer pop a little bit. You could do the polished pink, but um, gosh, I really liked how that navy was. That was kind of cool. That ties in the navy here as well. But okay, got to go with the plan. I don't know why, but... And it looks like I laid this layer down in my ink. <laughs> Oh boy, someday, someday I'll just have it together and be this neat crafter. I'm going to work on it. I'm not going to give up. Okay. Let's get this where we want it. Kind of just eighth of an inch border all the way around. And, you know, it doesn't probably show very well um, on the camera. It just kind of makes it all blend together, but it really does pop when you have that second layer. Oops, where are we going here? Okay, so that is just kind of keeping it simple. And then inside, I'm gonna go ahead and put um, this thanks so much. And then it's a light enough cardstock that you can just write your message to your um, to the recipient. You, you'll be able to just put that right and write right on that paper. Um, if you have a darker cardstock, we usually put some kind of a um, inside white 
panel so, or a light colored panel so that you can actually um, write a message in there. Okay, all right. So you could just do that. Now you can add on, you can, um, in fact, I would probably just take some type of strip of paper or um, just something to match. So one of these patterns, so this pattern, for example, would match. This is on the back, that would match too. What can we do to make that um, more decorative inside? Because obviously that's not all that. Um, I usually just go ahead and put a strip of this. So let's get some of that paper back. And I am going to cut a strip of it. I know where to cut it. Paper, where are you? I set it aside because I was done with it. And it's hiding in plain sight. I don't know, you guys. Wow. How can it be that? Okay. I'm really good at tucking things. I just kind of tuck things away when I'm done with them. That's what I had done. So is this one that's on the front? Yes, it is. Let's cut a strip of this and we want it to be about so long like that. And then I'm going to cut it with my little paper trimmer. That's my desktop one. Wow, I'm, I'm a mess. My phone fell again. Okay. Hang on, people. I'm so, so sorry. This does not usually happen. I, um, unplugged my cord. Wow, this is, I'm going to have to edit this before I put it on Facebook or YouTube. I'm sorry. Okay, let's cut a strip, shall we? <laughs> oh my. All right, so Gail, I don't know if you've watched before. If you're watching right now, just know that I'm not usually this bad, okay? So don't mind me. I'm just having one of those nights. It's, I don't usually have this many problems, although it's not like I don't have issues, right guys? But that's okay, it's all, it is what it is. Maybe I'll put it down here, which is what I'm gonna do. All right, so I just did a shout out to Gail, which is um, my aunt's friend and I think they're hanging out and doing some crafting today and among other things um, so hopefully they're having a lot of fun and um, I don't know if I'll ever get her to tune in again with all this fiasco <laughs> I'm just kidding okay um, you make a difference every day on the inside thank you so much and then you can write your note okay card number one um, let us find us some, yeah. what I'm going to do is I have to have glittery stuff of some kind. Just, um, I have some like shimmer spray. I'm going to give that a little shot too. I think that might help. And this again, won't really show up that well on camera. Oops. There, <laughs> big old blast right there. Won't that be good? And I might do a little on the inside, too, because I can't have a, too much glitter, right? Um, so that is going to kind of dry, and it won't be a, quite as in your face as it is now. <laughs> okay, there we are. There's one layout from a using a um, sketch card or a sketch. Uno. And the second one is I wanted to focus on using um, a stamp set. So this time I'm kind of thinking, coming from the vantage point of a stamp set that you have that you don't know quite what to do with it, okay? So I'm deciding to use this Batik Boutique. And um, it's a new one for me, I haven't used it yet. And so I like to kind of keep in mind, what would somebody do if that was something you had and you didn't know what to make with it. And so I found a sketch that I'm going to be using for this one. And it looks like so. And the thing I liked about it was the center one would be a nice place to put this bigger um, flowery type of a look. 
And this stamp set is, um, it's a stamping that is layered. So you have one, two, three different stamps that you can use together in this one that I'm using today. They layer, so you can do many different things with this set. It is a photopolymer set, which is the clear. And um, this is how the new photopolymer come. Um, you can just put them right on your actual case and they stick and just hold in place really nice. The image is here so that you know if you have them all so that you don't lose them. So I really like that feature with the new, the new way that they're um, being sent. Um, so I am going to be using several of these today and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I'm going to use a clear block. Which one is this? This is a D clear block. It also comes with a really gorgeous uh, die cut set. And I'm not really using much of that today, but there is, I will have to use it in the future because these make really, really pretty things, lots of different things that it can do with it. And I'm not really even going to scratch the surface because there's so much um, that I'm not going to be able to do it all today. And I haven't even used it all myself. I'm also going to use this Stitch So Sweetly. Um, this is a set of dies. And the reason I'm doing that is when you look at this, um, I don't have a big oval right now that I have. So instead of, you know, saying I can't use this, I'm going to substitute, which is something that you can do. That's the point is use what you have. So I decided to use, um, it's one of them that a little bit bigger of this size. I'm going to use this shape. But it comes with one more bigger. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll be cutting out a piece. Um, I'll be using this as well. This is just makes that scalloped edge that you see here. Right there. There's a scalloped edge. So we can get that on there. And we can use the banner punch or make your own banner point here that we just did. And, um, I, and then for the inside, I just used um, one of these to make the inside layer, and you'll see that in a second. So the colors that I've decided to use are um, navy here, a oh, blue, big surprise, right? Um, so my card base is this navy color, and the knight of navy, and then I am using, so from the same paper set, I'm using the blue, this is cut at four by five and a quarter, um, and that is going to be kind of the background part. I don't want to show you everything yet. So what we're going to do for pieces. Okay. Let's figure out. We need to make the inside image that I'm going to be doing right there. So what I'm going to do is stamp it on white. And so I am going to get my stamp block there. And the first thing I'm going to stamp is... Um, let me get my ink. This is my color palette, by the way. Fresh Freesia Misty Moonlight. And then I need the blue ink pad as well, the navy. So those are the colors that are featured on this um, card. I kind of like those that go together like so. I'm not using um, any pre-done um, DSP except for this layer that came from that same paper set that we already looked at. And so it's just using that blue basically. And then I'm coming up with my own other colors. I'm using the Misty Moonlight and that Fresh Freesia like I was just showing you. So what I need to do first is get white. And the white is going to be for that. So I want to stamp my image that's going to be the focal point of this card. And so I have this, and then we're going to get the white. I'm just going to find it scrap because it's going to be cut out. All right, so I have just a scrap piece, and I'm going to start with the navy. And the first one is just basically the outline of it. And you can kind of see it a little bit there, right? That's kind of how it looks as it, it's just the outline. This one doesn't have to go in any certain spot, like I said, because I will be die cutting this out. Okay, so 
So there is a nice, just a basic stamped image there. You could color that in with blends or markers or um, watercolor, whatever. But um, that is what I'm doing first. Then I'm going to clean off my stamp with my chamois. It's a chamois is this purple, like spongy type of a um, product that we have, but it's super, um, it just cleans them really well. It just looks ugly <laughs> because it gets stained, but it works perfect. It doesn't make my stamp get, you know, any color on it or anything. It just cleans that right off. Even though it looks dirty, it's not. I actually had just rinsed it out. And then I'm going to grab, um, the next stamp is kind of more of the, image that we're looking for. I'm trying to find it here. I probably can't see it that well. This time I'm going to use the uh, Misty Moonlight. And this one, you that's what's nice about photopolymer with this clear stamps. Um, you can see through it to stamp. But you can see right where you're going with it. Um, so you want to keep that kind of here. Normally you'd put your head right over it. But I'm going to attempt to kind of do this at an angle, which if it's not perfect, just know it's because I'm trying to do it without putting my head over there. So it's not going to be perfect. But it doesn't have to be anyways because we're not perfect and we don't have to have perfect things that we're doing. So there is that. Now this is going to come off. I'm going to be... Um, cutting that out so it doesn't matter what's on the edge okay then I'm going to switch this out and I'm going to do the next one better close my ink before I get it all over all right then the third pe uh, third one I'm going to stamp I know I had already put that on a little block I was getting nervous. I thought, my luck, I would lose it. And so we did that one. I'm going to put that back on my um, piece there. So for this one, I want to do the Fresh Freesia color. Ink it up. And it's you can't really see it here because it's such a light color, but once you stamp it, you definitely can see it, of course. Um, again... Kind of trying to do this looking through it and not over it like I would normally do. And like that. Now this is not a stamp that a stamp set that is like a perfectly lined up one. It's more like this isn't perfectly lined up, but that's okay because that's kind of how it looks. Likely story, right? <laughs> um, Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take my die from this die set that goes along with this, and I'm going to cut out the outside of it. Okay, I'm going to run it through my little die cut machine. Tonight, I'm going to use the die cut machine of this little one, and it is not looking pretty because I use it all the time, but this is my little um, stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's just a tabletop size, so I don't can't do 100% of my die cutting with it, but I can do a good portion of it. And so I um, would run it through here on this, as long as it can fit in this width of, gosh, was it three or three and a half? It is, it's approximately a three and a half inch width on it, and it goes through and it does the die cutting. And... I'm going to show you a little bit more of that in a second with this other piece that I'm die cutting. So um, just so that I would make sure I didn't mess up, I had already die cut this ahead of time because with the three layers of stamping, I just needed to know it would be okay. And so I did that through the magic of television, as they say. Um, and it was just using this die. And so that one is done. But I do want to show you, and I'll kind of this make sure that you know how the die cutting machine kind of works. I'm going to be die cutting this shape. Remember I was showing you um, this is the shape that I wanted 
as the background instead of this oval. I'm using this because that's what I have. So I'm going to cut out, out of this blue, I'm going to cut uh, uh, cut out this shape. And um, I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. So what you do is you make a, like a sandwich, and it tells you exactly on this plate here what that sandwich should look like. And it's telling me it needs to be a number one, and then a sandwich of these two clear plates. So I'm going to get that set up. I have one clear plate and then I'm going to put on top of it the other clear plate and as this gets pushed through the machine it is going to squeeze it and press it press it down to cut out that shape okay so I'm going to crank that through It'll probably shake all over the place I'm trying not to but then that's all you got to do and we'll see what it did it worked yep and it also put that stitching on there too so that you I don't know how well that'll pick up but it does have a stitching around that which is a nice little detail also okay all right so that is all the die cutting I need to kind of show you um, next I am getting the next part of it all right so what do we have we need to start assembling we have that. Um, okay, now, what other pieces do we need? Here is my oval. Um, and then we can decide if we want to make this. Um, they show the, the circle as being kind of layered, a layered circle. So I could choose whether or not I wanted this to be layered too, like a little border around it. But I don't think I'll need it, but we'll see as we go. I did die cut this out of the navy blue also so that we could see which one we liked better because I really didn't know until I assembled it which one I would like better. So I did cut them both out of this. And then we have our image that we already colored and die cut out. We're gonna need to get that on there. This is the inside layer that I cut out um, using that, uh, remember that die that I had showed you earlier that just cut out this rectangular shape. We're going to put that on the inside. So that doesn't really show in that. And then, um, so our image that we cut out looks like this, only it's all ready to go, all die cut and looking nice. Um, I did want to show you while I think about it here. This is what all the dies look like when they're die cut. I'm just going to show you that detail, especially if you can see like, I don't know, this one here, for example, really has a lot of detail. And then what you can do is swap out some of those pieces and put, oh, you could put a different color in there. You could put foil, that kind of thing. There's a lot you can do that we'll explore another time, but I wanted you to see that. And, um, all right, we're getting there. I just got to find all my elements now. Here it is. Are you like hollering at the screen going, there it is, I see it, I see it. All right, there we go. Now, another thing that I prepared for this was, here's our scallop edge that we cut out using a die. That was this part right there. And then, um, what else do we have? So there's scallop, there's this long banner. So for that, I cu just cut out a one inch strip of the Misty Moonlight. And then we have this piece. So what I did was I took the navy and I ran it through my little machine that I just showed you. But this time, instead of using a die to cut it out, I used an uh, embossing folder to get mainly I wanted this word that says thanks on there um, and the other ones are other languages and there we go see how that looks um, I mainly wanted the word thanks since this is a thank you card and that you use like a little it's very similar to what I used but it's more of a folder I'll grab one guys excuse me All right, so I use the thanks, hello, thanks, hello, embossing folder. It's 
So you just take your paper. Whoops. Gosh, I dropped it. You just take your paper that you want to emboss, open up the folder, and then the pressure from pushing it through the machine adds, oh, this is a hello one. <laughs> this is thanks and hello. Is thanks on there? Okay, we have a different one that is the thanks. This is the hello. Same type of a uh, folder, but you would put your paper in, run it through the machine, and then it um, just puts this embossed image on there. So this is going to be on there as well. Okay, let's assemble. I said that before, right? But this time it really will. Okay, so let's go back to our basic, our base level here. And we are going to put this on there. I think I need to just trim off a teeny titch yet, guys, off of this one end. So I want to take a little bit more off so that it will, for some reason, it just looks a little bit um, long. So let's just trim a titch. Okay, there, just trimmed a titch. And I'm gonna add that on. So let's get gluing. Actually, it's not gluing. You could use adhesive, liquid adhesive if you have that. A lot of um, a lot of people like to use that. Um, whatever you, again, whatever you have will work. This is just what I had close by, and it works slick, so I know that. I'm going to put this layer on, and it's going to go on pretty quickly, I think. Hopefully. And I just want to try to get an even border all the way around. Okay, like so. Then this is showing me, I think the next thing would be the scalloped border. So that I have to decide where I want it to go. And that is going to go oh, probably around that because it looks like this flag. Again, people, just so you know, you don't have to do it exactly like that. You can do the layers any way you want. I'm just showing you how, like, if you really want to follow it, you do it. You know, you can do it however, but if I wanted to follow it, this is what I would do for that. So I would probably want it to be a little bit shorter, determine that much, like so, but I can always trim it a little better later. And I do want to use that um, punch again on the bottom so that I get that banner edge. Or you, of course, could also do like... I showed you before and just cut it yourself. Okay. All right. Ooh, I don't think I did that right. I didn't have it centered. Luckily, I can redo it. I wasn't paying attention, was I? If I don't get it centered, it's not going to be in the center. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so... Let's go here. My concern with this is that I need to make sure that my other layer is bigger so that it's not too tall. So if I have this on there, like so, I think I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. I need to trim a little off. So I just don't want it to be too big. If that makes sense. So I just kind of want a straight cut here. Making that more the size I need. All right, so this is going to go approximately here. Okay, now I don't know if it's straight. Use my grid paper. You can get optical illusion or whatever. So that you, you think you're putting it on straight and then it doesn't go on straight. So you kind of want something to go by there. Then next is going to be this. Okay, and again, you kind of want it in the center. But there's no rules. You could put it over there if you want. You know, maybe you would like that better on your card. Just experiment around and see what you like. 
So I am not going to put it there, though. I am going to put it in the middle. So center it is going to roughly be... I do want it to go... Oh, did I not make it long enough? <laughs> um, no, I didn't make it long enough. So what I'm going to have to do now, because I punched it crooked. I'm going to split it, but nobody will ever know, hopefully. So I'm going to put it down here and center it about in that area like so. I haven't really pressed it down, and I'll show you why in a moment. And then I know I want it up here, approximately there, but how do I know if it's straight? What I'm going to do is use my ruler just because I don't trust myself. Some people are very good at not needing a ruler, but if you're like me and you don't always get things straight, then you might want to use something as an aid. So I can see I got didn't get this over the same, so I'm kind of moving it over a little. I kind of want them to look like they are in the same line. Um, I need a little more glue, I think. I'll put a little bit under here. Well, yeah, let's do that. Maybe my liquid adhesive would have worked a little better for this. And I'm going to put a little more. Well, I don't need it really. I think that'll stick down okay. If not, I might go put a little more glue on there. Some of that liquid adhesive would be a good thing to kind of slip underneath. Uh, the next layer is this one, and it's a little teeny bit long, so I can trim it down a little bit. What am I doing? I'm going to use my cutter, because I don't trust myself again. So I'm just going to trim about an eighth of an inch off. Let's see if that fits better. Okay, yes, that, that's better. So I will go ahead and put this on. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing with this. The seal isn't cooperating with me tonight. Probably because I'm trying to use it on a spongy. I have this spongy uh, layer underneath, which is nice for stamping, but not so much for seal adhesive, apparently. Maybe I'm getting to the end. Oh my goodness, come on. There we go. Tonight, I'm having to coax it a little bit more. All right, so I can pretty much tell where I'm going with it this time because um, it has that little stitched edge there that I want to use as a guideline. And we'll go like so. We're getting there. Next, um, we can decide which one we like. So we have this layer. We could do it like that and then put this on here. Okay. Or we could do this and put that, but I definitely don't like that. I would want this one, I think. One thing we could do is layer it like this to um, kind of set that off a little bit. So you just kind of have to play a little bit. So imagine that this looks like that the whole way around. You know, would I want it to look with the blue there? I don't think so. I think I would like this lighter one on top. Um, the, normally, this is stuff I have figured out ahead of time, but I'm kind of wanting you to see how that creative process can kind of work. Um, and just you kind of have to play around with things and find what you like. So I am going to, even like that looks nice with just the top part showing like that because then on the bottom you have your the blue edge and on the top you have that so I'm gonna do that I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it in half about there and you probably think what did you do <laughs> I'm gonna layer that okay so to do that I need glue again or adhesive not working. I must it must be out or almost out. 
Oh, it's not cooperating. And we're going to go like so. Okay. And in fact, now in the future, if you ever want to do a, something like this, you can adhere the bottom on as well. And then it just makes it a little bit um, of that border. But I don't really need it on the bottom because I already have that navy layer down there. And so I'm just going to use it on the top. And I am going to want this to kind of set up off of the project a little. So I'm going to put some um, of these dimensionals like we used before on here. I'm going to go about four of them. And then I'm going to poke them off with this guy. Oh, I almost challenged. All right, so that is going to go. Just want to make sure I get it straight and centered. And I want that fanx right there to kind of show. So I'm going to go up a little bit with it. Um, placement isn't crucial as far as, you know, you don't have to have it in a certain spot. But I do want it to be um, fairly straight. Okay. And then this is going to go here. All right. I'm kind of happy with that. Okay, so, you know, most card fronts, you like to put a, um, a sentiment on here. And you could easily do that, but since the word thanks is right here, I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, of course, I have to embellish it a little bit and I'm knocking stuff around here. So I do want to do a little shimmer maybe or wink of Stella, something like that, and um, some gems. And I usually do ribbon. Um, for the ribbon on this one, I was looking at maybe doing some of this fresh freesia. Um, that could go pretty much anywhere. I do kind of like that. Ooh, that's pretty, but it covers up the word thanks. Um, okay, could go any of, I could just do the bow. So I am going to make a bow, and I'll see where to put it. So I just make two bunny ear loops, cross one over. And tuck this one back and through, bring it through the center of the loop. But when you're all thumbs like I am today, you get, it doesn't work. So you try it again. Ah. Okay, there we are, bunny ears, crossing over. Okay, bring it through. I'm pulling this one through here. At first, it doesn't look good, but then you just cinch it up the way that you want it and just kind of play around with it and pull it and make it obey, <laughs> basically, even though it you know, doesn't always do that. But you just kind of you fuss a little bit. Very rarely do I make a bowl where I just make it and it comes out perfect every time. So you just make it work. Bows are very intimidating, I realize, for a lot of people. You can just do a, a plain, like, just do a knot. Sometimes that's something that looks nice, too. People who don't want to make them, you can um, just do a knot. And that would be kind of more like um, a just basic knot, believe it or not. It's just super easy. You just kind of do that with it. And... Um, then you could trim it and then just place it on there like that. I'm kind of tempted to do that, actually. How do we like the bow? I'm going to knot it. I kind of like that. So let's use this. I want this, um, this part right here to be on top. And then I usually have scissors dedicated just to my ribbon. So I kind of want to angle cut it. 
and I can always trim it down once I get it put on, which I will be doing, I'm sure. So we got that. And now for these, I love glue dots. And so to get a glue dot on there, you take your not to your glue dot strips. Um, let me grab that. So if you have some glue dots, you can um, put your glue dot on, put your, your project on your glue dot and then pull it off. And there we go. I think I grabbed the wrong ones, but that'll work. And so um, this has a glue dot on there. Don't know if you can see it. Stick it into place like that, and I am going to trim it down a little bit. I need new scissors, new um, ribbon ones. So then I'll be able to dedicate this pair just to, or to do whatever I want with it, because right now it's getting a little dull. All right, so now we need to put a little, little bling on there, put our center piece in, and then we're done. All right, now I did pre-stamp my inside with heartfelt thanks, and um, that came from a different stamp set. Um, it came from Encircled in Friendship. Again, this is an example, use what you have, and that's just the one I happened to find that I thought looked nice. And so we'll go ahead and adhere that in the inside. Try to get that kind of straight. All right, there we go. I think this turned out nice. I love these colors together. I don't know I, what you think of that. Um, again, we need a little bit of bling. I always have to have a little bling bling here and there on there. <laughs> here and there on there. Wow. All right, I am going to use... Um, this, I think that's the Fresh Freesia, um, colors there. And so I'm going to go, um, I'm going to always use a odd number pretty much. I think that's what I usually do. I'm going to put one here and I'll put one on the other side of it. And then I will put one more just kind of off in a random spot could go here. That's kind of even Steven. Kind of like that, I guess. All right, so here is my card. Um, and I probably would do a little shimmer mist, but again, we don't have to do that. So thanks. And then on the inside, heart, with heartfelt thanks. Yay! So this was the sketch. And you can kind of see how that works then. You can use that as a way to help you get um, uh, ideas and come up with something new. Like, I would never come up with that on my own. I'm just I wouldn't do it. Um, a lot of people are good at that. But I'm really not. So we did that one. And then we also did this one. Okay? I know I would never do that one. Probably not my favorite, but it's okay. Um, I could experiment more with some of the, um, I don't know, other things like um, different papers or whatever. Probably the yellow on yellow is what I would change. <clears throat> Regardless, you make a difference every day. And did I put the in? Yeah. Thank you so much. And speaking of thank you so much, thank you so much for joining me, you guys. I just really appreciate it and hope this has helped you a little bit. I'm going to... Um, come back to you here and we'll see here hi <laughs> thank you for joining me I uh, hope you get a chance to do some crafting soon oh yay Mary and Karna see they finally came up Karna's here thank you Karna appreciate it hi Joanne almost forgot that you were on well thank you Joanne I haven't seen you for a while I missed you and Cindy and Gail and Karna and Mary, nice to see you, new Mary. Um, so I hope you all have a great Memorial Weekend, and um, I'll be seeing you, Karna. Hope you're doing well. Take care, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Night.